So everybody, iPadOS 18.5 is finally out to the public and it should be the final major release until WWDC when iPadOS 19 is announced. So in this video, we're going to go over everything that's new because even though most might say this is not much that's going on with this update, I would argue that there are some great quality of life improvements, some bug squashing, and some things to take note of, especially from a battery life perspective. So without further ado, let's talk all things 18.5 on the iPad. Let's get into it. Well, alright everyone, let's get started with this video and I'm going to pull up the iPad right next to me to show off exactly what's new with this update. So we're going to start off with the build size. So again, this is iPadOS 18.5 and it is much larger than the iOS counterpart. We're at about 7.5 gigs. So give yourself at least, you know, 12 to 15 gigs of open space in order for this to install and install correctly. And then when it comes to the build number to make sure that you are on the correct one, let's go to general, let's go into the about section, let's go to the iPadOS version, and you should be on 22F76. Now this means that you are on the normal public version, so if it is available, then go for it, definitely download it, and that's how you can confirm that you're on the right one. And then in terms of what's new, again, there's more quality of life updates than anything when it comes to actual features and functionality. The first we're going to touch on is in the mail app. So if you open up the mail app, Let's go right here. The first thing you're gonna notice is when you do open it and it's in the primary section here, there is a little bit of a little, I guess, peek into the next section. So if I do tap on the next section, that is going to be the all mail section. Before, that little peek wasn't there before. And when you are in the all mail section, you can just normally go through it as you see fit. But now it is peeking there for those people that just in case aren't aware that there is another option there for you to be able to go to the all mail. The next thing that we did notice was that if you go into the ellipses, the three dots up here, you now have the ability to turn this off and on directly from the mail app, which is going to be the show contact photos. So you can toggle that off and you can see that those contact photos are now gone. If I go back in here and check that on, you do have all the contact photos back on here. So again, that's good to see because prior to that, you would have to go into your settings, then go and search for mail, which is gonna be in the apps down here, which I'm still not a fan of how they've kind of organized this section of the settings. But you go into mail, then you, you would have to go into right here. So it says message list and show contact photos. So if we turn that off, go back into the mail app, they should be gone. And then just go to the ellipses again and tap that on. So that is going to be something that was added to just help you a little bit more from a, I guess, from a friction standpoint. Next up is going to be in the iPadOS settings. So if you go into general and go into Apple Care and warranty, you have a brand new view at what it looks like to manage all of your normal warranty, your factory warranty, and then also your Apple Care warranty. So first, you get a nice little splash right here, or I guess this little caption that says view covered status for all your devices. You can see all the different devices that are linked to your iOS or you know your Apple ID account. And you can see what it looks like from different categories. So again, you have your Apple Care Plus, you have your just under warranty, then you have your limited warranty, which is pretty much the factory warranty if you don't get Apple Care. And then finally, the coverage expired. So if we go on here, this is going to be my M4 iPad Pro to show you guys the difference. It gives you the name of the iPad Pro, the serial number, and then check boxes next to what you do have service for. So here I have hardware service and then chat and phone support. And then of course you can get and open the Apple support application to manage this even further. And then you can see that it expires on May 14th, which I think is coming up in the next two days for me. But then you do have something to show off, maybe my iPhone, which I do pay for Apple Care Plus, you get everything that you need. You get the accidental damage recovery, the hardware service, express replacement, 24 hour, 24 seven priority access for support. So just a way to be able to glance and manage everything from your settings and from your general settings, because before it was a little bit hit or miss and I never knew if I had coverage, if I was using Apple Care, if I wasn't using Apple Care. So that goes to show you that it's just a little easier to find and then be able to go into Apple support to then file some sort of claim or set up some sort of genius bar recommendation or set up some sort of like replacement kit. But that's new with iPadOS 18.5 as well as iOS. So the next one's gonna be in the News Plus application. If you go into the food section, you are granted with a brand new splash screen to promote the cooking and the recipe section of News Plus. Again, you need to be a News Plus subscriber in order to get access to this, but it says your subscription includes 70,000 recipes from premium publications conveniently and beautifully presented, which I agree. And I also think this is a foreshadow to a future hardware product, but we'll see how that ends up going. And then I also wanna show off that we got some brand new wallpapers. So if we go into our settings, go into wallpaper, go to add new wallpaper. If you scroll down here in the pride section, you do have brand new pride wallpapers, which are always a welcome addition. So if you do want to add those into your portfolio of, you know, different lock screens and home screens, you can now do that. And that's added to all devices that are running 18.5. And then lastly, from a feature set perspective, I do want to mention that there is a nice update to parental controls and screen time. 
So you do have the ability to limit how much screen time your child gets via parental controls, but technically if they, let's say you put an hour on a cap for Instagram or some sort of social media app and they reach that hour, then a passcode does come up. If they know that passcode, they can just put it in and go bypass it and you're not notified. Now parents can receive a notification when screen time passcode is used on a child's device. So even though they try to outsmart you, at the end of the day, you can go back and be like, hey, I know that you know my passcode, I'm gonna change it. And now I'm reducing your screen time by another half an hour. So that's a great little addition to that screen time kind of UI as well as the implementation of it to make sure that it is working as intended. And there's also some security updates that were added to the 16E, something to take note of. And I'll leave a link down below as to exactly what that means overall. But ideally, it's just to make sure that things are, you know, up to snuff when it comes to a security standpoint. And then lastly, I do want to bring up the battery life when it comes to the M4 iPad Pro, which is what I've been using, what I've been rocking. But let's go again. I've been getting about two and a half hours of screen on time, but I haven't really pushed it to its limits. But let's go on a day like Monday. Monday, I spent less than 50% of my battery and I got almost seven hours of screen on time with Blackmagic, the settings app, ChatGPT. Another day, Tuesday, I used up about 35 to 40% of my battery, three hours and 43 minutes. On this day, Thursday, six hours and 15 minutes, and I used less than 50% of my battery. So you can see that I can easily get anywhere from nine to 12 hours of battery life, depending on the day, depending on the type of software I'm using. If I'm using LumaFusion and Affinity Photo and Blackmagic, sure, it'll run out closer to nine, maybe eight hours, but if I'm just surf surfing on the web, in Safari, watching some YouTube, I can definitely get 12 hours of battery life even while connected to my Magic Keyboard, which again, the Magic Keyboard used to drain the battery of my iPad like crazy. So that's everything that came with 18.5. Battery life has been awesome. Let's finish up this video. So as you saw, the iPad continues to be a battery champ and a battery king, even when you are using some intensive applications like LumaFusion, like Affinity Photo and things like that. And overall, this update did bring some nice quality of life updates like the mail tweaks, the new pride wallpapers, the parental control kind of notifications that came into play. So overall, a decent upgrade, things that were definitely welcome additions, not maybe needed and nothing functionally might have changed, but overall, we're getting ready and geared up for WWDC because I think and the rumors are that iPad OS 19 is going to be a big one for the iPad Pro specifically, bringing more pro level applications and pro level features to the iPad Pro with something that's been missing for years. If somebody asks me which iPad to get, I usually steer people towards the M series iPad Air because it is much cheaper and you get pretty much everything you want internally out of an iPad. You just don't get the nice hardware of the iPad Pro. So hopefully with iPad OS 19, we get some sort of differentiation, some feature set that really makes the iPad Pro worth earning, that really makes the iPad Pro worth purchasing over an iPad Air, because you are paying almost more than double at this point just to get an iPad Pro. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Leave a comment down below what you think. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one and stay up to date with all things Apple, click on one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody. I'm real, real excited for WWDC. Definitely stay tuned because we got coverage coming.